Hello, and welcome to a new series of conversations that are part of Leading in Crisis, an ongoing initiative from Government Technology and the Center for Digital Government. In these interviews, we'll be highlighting some of the incredible leadership and innovations in state and local government in response to the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Zach Patton, the chief editor for the content studio here at Government Technology, and I'm extremely excited to be hosting these discussions. And I'd like to take a moment to thank our partners at Oracle for helping make this series possible. Our first conversation centers on Tarrant County, Texas, home of Fort Worth, which launched an innovative new website to help speed up virus testing for its residents. The site brings together a lot of different entities and a lot of different partners, and it has made Tarrant County's solution a model for other jurisdictions all across the country. I sat down with Vinny Taneha, the public health director for Tarrant County, to learn more. Joining me today is Vinny Taneha, the public health director for Tarrant County. Vinny, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me here, Zach. So talk to us a little bit of just about the pandemic in Tarrant County. Set the scene a little bit for us, and then talk about kind of how you came up with the idea for the self-screening site. So uh, pandemic, uh, you know, obviously is worldwide, and the situation here in Tarrant County is no different. I mean, we've got over 5,000 cases. Um, and just sort of uh, for perspective, Tarrant County, a lot of people don't know, uh, but as you said, is home to Fort Worth. Uh, we are now the 13th largest city in the country. Surprise. <laughs> uh, the county itself is growing very fast. Uh, over 2 million people live here. And we're right next door to Dallas, which has a little bit more name recognition. Uh, but we're like literally in the same metro area. They have about 3 million people. We have 2 million people. So it's a big metroplex. Um, so highly concentrated population with possible for a lot of disease activity. So about 5,000 cases here about 150 or so deaths, um, relatively mild compared to other places like New York or LA and things like that, but still very significant for our community. Um, and the idea came about that there was this growing need. Uh, we heard on social media, we heard directly from the public on our hotline that we need more testing capacity in our community, more options, because in the beginning, only public health departments have the testing capability, but public health departments and their labs typically are not geared for mass testing. We're mostly surveillance laboratories. Um, so as commercial capacity came on board with private labs, uh, we thought that, you know, the private sector will pick up the, the bulk of it and, and it will be okay. But the demand from the public was we need governmentally run uh, testing sites. So that's where we came up with the idea, okay, let's pull together some drive-through testing locations. And, you know, we had a partnership with City of Fort Worth and the University of North Texas Health Sciences Center and City of Arlington. So Arlington is our second major city in the county. They're not small by any means. There are over 400,000 people living in Arlington. So it's like Fort Worth is the bigger city, about 900,000. Arlington is about, you know, 400,000 and then rest in other, other parts of the county. And uh, so this partnership got pulled together and we were sort of toying with the idea on how to register a lot of people so we could give them appointments and handle all the information. And we had seen a couple of examples here and there of people using web-based tools. And we were toying with the idea and as luck would have it, uh, we have an existing relationship actually with Adobe and uh, because they helped do our website. And our IT sort of had a conversation with them and they said, hey, by the way, we're part of this Alliance for Innovation, a technology partnership. Oracle's our partner, Splunk, and many other technology companies. And we're actually, uh, we have some core technology that we would like to develop with you if you're interested. So we did a demo with them and, and we're like, wow, this is the solution we're looking for. And that's how it all came together. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of incredible the, the number of different partners kind of being able to work together on that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. How long did that process actually take to, to stand up the site? Um, who on, on the county's side was involved in that? And, you know, what was the, what was the cost to you all? What, was, what did all that look like? So first, let's talk about the cost. So what think made things better and easier was that there was no cost. 
a lot of our technology partners here, you know, Oracle, Adobe, Splunk, and many others uh, that are part of the Alliance for Innovation, uh, they've done a great service to the public by, you know, donating their time and their software and their efforts uh, towards this. So it makes things a lot easier because when you have to go buy and procure things, it takes a little bit longer in government because, again, it's taxpayers' dollars. You got to, you know, bid it out the right way and make sure all that. But when there's no money involved, that piece is taken care of. So that's what made things faster. Um, and again, the funny part is that what took longer was actually contracting. Even though there was no money involved, it took us almost almost a week and a half to get through attorneys on both sides, looking at you know agreements and things like that, and going through our governmental process of getting it through our governing entity, which is the county commissioner's court, which is still very fast for, for government. And from the word go, once it was executed, literally less than a week to get the side up and running. I mean, it was amazing speed that uh, all these partners uh, really showed on how to uh, get from a concept to a go live running website that did not crash. It performed perfectly. And, you know, we made a lot of updates as we went along, but the version one was ready in less than a week and released out to the public with live appointments being available. Uh, and, and of course, a lot of partners are on our side. Our IT department was involved, public health people were involved in all the sites. So the sites were being run by partner entities like UNT Health Sciences Center, City of Fort Worth and City of Arlington. They all had input on it and we spent countless hours. I mean, that week I remember being so tired because you know you're already tired from you know running a public health operation in a uh, pandemic and then you have to like get this thing up and running and they all need input you know decisions so it was, it was very very challenging but it, everybody worked so hard and got it done in less than a week it was amazing that's incredible that's incredible so Talk a little bit about how the, the, the site actually works for, uh, for residents. What, what, do they, what do they see when they go on there? I know it's, it's a lot of kind of self-screening and, and getting people the, the, you know, targeted to the right help that they need. How does that work? Right. So the, the site is really a self-screening tool. So our site is covidtesting.tarrantcounty.com. Again, it's covidtesting.tarrantcounty.com. And if that takes actually, and the reason I say that, it, it takes more time to decide on the appropriate name <laughs> because you want it to be, you know, easy to remember. So when you talk about it, it rolls off your tongue and people can remember that. Uh, and you learn that as you go through this development process, your technology partners guide you through that. And, you know, it's the hardest decision to make, quite honestly, because everything else flows well after that. But um so the, type, uh, the site itself is um, also a, a self-screening tool where we understood that not everybody's going to want a test or even if they do, they may not qualify for a test. And so it's a self-screening tool with a lot of educational components built in. So if you go through, uh, you start with a zip code, you know, where do you live? And then it kind of qualifies you based on that because we were trying to limit that to Tarrant County residents. Um, Again, being a large metro county, you know, people from all over could come and overwhelm your system. So we were trying to just stay focused within our community because Dallas had their own setup and multiple sites going. So we wanted to, you know, make sure Tarrant County residents had that opportunity as well. And then once you put in the zip code, it walks you through a brief questionnaire, whether you have any symptoms or if you're a healthcare worker, first responder. And in later iterations, we've opened it up where if you were a senior over 65 with or without symptoms, or if you had a, or were a person that had underlying health conditions with or without symptoms, or if you were now a retail store worker, because as the economy is reopening up, you know, restaurant workers are coming back, retail store workers are coming back. And just by the nature of their interaction all day long with the public, they're more likely to get exposed to somebody so we opened that risk criteria up and this was done in phases. I mean, you know, we went live on April 26th and a week later we, you know, loosened up the criteria and then the second week we loosened up a little bit more. Um, so that site goes through all of that uh, questionnaire fairly quick and then it qualifies you whether you are qualified to get an appointment for a test. Otherwise, it reassures you by giving you some information about how COVID is spread and what you should do to prevent the spread in your own family and at your workplace. So that's kind of the overall setup for the website. 
And you must have had to sort of, uh, you know, in terms of outreach to let people know that the site existed. What, what did that look like? A variety of ways. Um, you know, so we had partner cities that, you know, were pulling together the, these uh, drive through uh, websites or uh, locations. So they advertised on their websites through their social media. Uh, they put out flyers, word of mouth. And then from a county perspective, we launched a paid social media campaign on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and I think Snapchat. I, I would have to go look at that. But I, I believe that they had three platforms that they paid. Uh, and then, of course, other efforts like putting information on Nextdoor, um, information on our website. And then a big effort is also talking to our media partners. Uh, we have a county commissioner's court uh, every week where they discuss matters for the county, uh, you know, governing entity, like decisions about contracts or how things are going with COVID, you know, what is public health doing, what are other partners doing. So a lot of discussion about our testing website uh, on that, uh, you know, commissioner's court and really uh, understanding where the needs are for the community, where future locations should be put in and so forth. And that drives media attention to it because uh, usually they're there covering with live cameras and things and then opportunity for interviews afterward. And they put out good stories about how people can utilize the website and where these locations are, where they can go. So all of that effort combined has been our outreach effort uh, for advertising the website and the tool that uh, it brings. That's great. That's great. And, and how has it been received by the community? Have, have you seen a lot of the kind of numbers that you thought you might see in terms of people using the site? Yes, uh, it kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, you know, as you open up any new location and a new website, there's a lot of traffic and then it sort of declines. And that was kind of part of our decision making process. The criteria in the beginning were a little bit tighter because we didn't want to just overwhelm the testing sites and then there's no appointments and people get frustrated. So the criteria in the beginning were a little tighter. And as the interest sort of started to wane off, we made the criteria looser so more people would qualify and then they would, you know, use the website. So it's worked out great. Um, you know, last I looked, we had about uh, almost over 9,000, close to 10,000 people that have screened uh, on the website and gotten an answer whether they qualified or not. And almost half of them uh, have gotten an appointment. So that's oh, a huge number. Almost close to 5,000 appointments have been issued in less than a month, uh, just using three locations. So that is quite a tremendous, uh, you know, effort in the community that has already uh, been underway. And, and it's growing, you know, as we look to add more locations, uh, they're all going to funnel through this website. Uh, and then, you know, people will have more access. And that way, we hope that it would increase uh, utilization of the website and also utilization of our testing site. Yeah, no, that's really terrific. That's really great. So I want to back up a little bit because I know that you talked about how this, you know, it represents a partnership between uh, a lot of different uh, public sector entities, the county, the city of Fort Worth, uh, a couple of uh, the University of North Texas that you mentioned, and a couple of health uh, centers as well. Has, has that been a kind of partnership that you guys have been able to pursue in the past? Or is it the kind of thing that you think paves the way for better partnership on stuff going forward? You know, what, what do you kind of take away from this in terms of working with those other public sector entities? Right. So uh, partnerships have existed in the past for various reasons. I mean, Tarrant County, one of the things I'm real proud of is that you know truly they uh, do a good job on collaborating with other entities in our community and the collaboration spirit is very uh, well alive and strong uh, but to do it this fast and at this scale uh, is obviously new to all of us and but it's again you know common interest for everybody so that's helped um, and to bring together you know academic institutions and their clinical people you know, city leadership and their staff to, you know, kind of do the logistics around the site, medical entities like UT Southwestern to help out with some guidance on where the sites need to be and, you know, sort of a post survey on how the patient experience has been through those sites. So a lot of, you know, different public sector and academia type of partnership. And then, of course, this technology partnership with Alliance for Innovation. I mean, that's been just amazing because to have such horsepower behind what you want to do, because it's a technology-driven solution to make it easy for everybody. 
Uh, it's just been amazing. And, and we love that because that way we're not, you know, scrambling, staying on the phone, noting down names and, okay, what time your appointment is. It's all taken care of because uh, it can be very overwhelming to have to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you know, what about kind of those lessons in terms of uh, that ability to, you know, as you said, being able to kind of stand up a site like this in, in a week or a week and a half is, is just sort of unheard of uh, in, in government world, unfortunately. What do you yes. kind of, what do you sort of take forward in terms of lessons about working with those private sector partners and kind of being able to, um, you know, use those partnerships to be more agile and more nimble and kind of able to react to these kinds of events. Right. Um, you know, it does make things a lot faster when you have partners that are willing. Um, you know, again, I can't thank enough all these uh, technology company partners, Adobe, Oracle, Splunk, and many others that are part of Alliance for Innovation. Um, without their help, this would not have been possible. And their leadership has been very generous. They've actually jumped on some of our calls to just see how things are going. Reached out to us separately saying, hey, how could things be better? And, you know, there's always some snags you hit. You know, teams are assigned to different development projects. And here we got something that happened and we need a solution. They've been able to divert worldwide resources. I mean, some of the teams they were able to divert are not here in, here in the U.S., you know, they're sitting in Australia or, you know, in India or somewhere, and they're like, okay, this team is busy. We can assign that team, and we'll get your issue taken care of. I mean, it's just amazing to see how quickly they've been able to respond with no money involved. I mean, this is so tremendous. You know, they've done this out of goodness of their heart, and, you know, it, it's made things a lot faster. Again, money kind of slows things down, and, and talk to a public health department, we're always short on money. I mean, you know. So that becomes a challenge for us to go get approvals for dollars and, and go spend things. That takes a long time sometimes to get all of that organized. So to have partnerships like this come through in a major emergency like this uh, helps out. And, and future um, you know, development, if that can be done in a collaborative model like this to meet some public health needs, uh, I think would be tremendous. Again, you know, I know it's asking a lot for, for technology companies that are, you know, driven. Obviously, they're in the market to make money. But if they have some pro bono dollars to help us out, we'd love to continue to utilize these opportunities. And let me give you one example. There's been a conversation already that, you know, this was a great uh, sort of model to do mass registration for testing. How about we look ahead into the future and develop this tool because the core technology is there for mass registration for vaccination, right? Because, you know, vaccinations are going to be coming. And, and the one way that we're looking at getting out of this COVID mess is to vaccinate everybody once the vaccine is available. So we're already having those conversations about how to do that. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be a paid effort or if it's going to be something that they can do pro bono. But, you know, the, the, uh, the excitement is there. They're willing to listen. We're willing to kind of give our requirements and see what needs to be done. And let's see where we can take this. Yeah, that's terrific. And I, I think that that sort of level of collaboration and kind of openness to working together is something that I, you know, I, I hope obviously this crisis is sort of a once in a lifetime situation. But, but the ability to kind of take those lessons forward, I think, is great for, for local government. Mm -hmm. It is. It truly is. So, you know, this um, series of conversations, as I said, is our, our, our leadership in crisis series. And I just wonder, kind of thinking more broadly about that, what, what does that mean to you? What are the, the kind of qualities that have served you all well in Tarrant County in terms of, of leadership in crisis? What do you what do you what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated answer, but let me try to boil it down to a couple, three things that I learned. Um, one, I would say that use all tools in your tool belt. Uh, you know, we're in public health, so we think, okay, public health has to lead and do this uh, effort, and, and we think uh, in a public health way. But what I've learned is that there are other parties and other sectors that are very willing and very capable of helping. For example, being the Alliance for Innovation and their technology solution to help us out real quick, uh, you know, working with our political leadership to make policy level decisions, you know, whether it was at stay at home orders, 
or closing down schools or other things. I mean, public health alone could not have executed that. Um, so, you know, use all tools in the tool belt is one of the things that I've learned, uh, you know, during this crisis and, and you know, some, uh, some before this, um, you know, making sure that you communicate well and accept help that is being provided. I think that's the other piece. And then really is just that um, you've got to stay very, very flexible and nimble. I mean, just even during this site development process, you know, there were things that we wanted to do that just could not be accommodated. And you just have to be willing to accept that, you know, not everything under the sun can be delivered in such a short amount of time. You got to piece, you know, together what you can into a working solution. And then you come back in version two and version three and version four. I mean, you can always improve upon that and add more capability. So that has become very um, obvious to me that that's a good way to go because what you need is a quick solution. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be a working solution so you can get the greatest need met and then other things can come later. Um, and it's been just a, a great experience in, in learning and, and going through all of this. Uh, again, with a crisis this large, I mean, everybody's feeling overwhelmed. Uh, and, you know, that old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? That has, you know, quite literally come true. <laughs> so that's where we are, quite honestly, eating it one bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a, a really good job. And, you know, I, I, have you have you been in touch with other counties? Have other counties reached out to you about kind of, how to replicate this for themselves? Yes, uh, we've been talking to other communities. Um, you know, there are some small and some large health departments that are interested in our solution. In fact, I connected a, a smaller health department with uh, AFI about, you know, adopting uh, the solution. I don't know where they are in their process with, of doing that, but the immunization idea, the mass, mass immunization idea actually came from that small health department. They're like, oh, this is a great tool. Have you thought of this? And I'm like, oh, no, I did. But let's let's uh, talk and see what we can get done, you know. <laughs> so, yes, that's really great. Yeah, that's really great. Um, any other sort of uh, uh, parting advice for, for other counties, other jurisdictions, uh, kind of both, you know, specifically about kind of tackling this crisis, but the, the, the larger um, the larger point of just kind of uh, of leading through crises in general? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things that working in government um, sometimes has its own challenges, right? I mean, we've got our processes and our ways, and it's very tied around procurement and how do you spend money and how do you engage different companies that are supposed to be your vendors, right? I mean, you know, there's rules around that and how you can communicate with them and all that. But what I've learned is that in a crisis, you know, you're not above asking for help. Go ask for help and you'll find partners that are willing to help and, and they can do it. And there are government processes that actually allow for that to happen in a very quick way. You know, case in point, I had never thought that we could get it done this quick. But when we presented that this option is available, we found a new way. And, and you know, the processes that we had in our county were very supportive of getting this done in a very short amount of time. I mean, in government time, this is unheard of. I mean, you know, from start to finish, two and a half weeks. I mean, that's just, that's just amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it's because everybody came together. They saw the need. They saw the potential of the solution. And we just made it happen. And, and that's the advice I would give that don't let any opportunity pass by. Explore it. Ask for help. And you shall receive. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, Vinny Taneha, thank you so much for sharing your uh, your story with us and kind of the experience there in Tarrant County. Thanks so much. Um, and uh, again, I'd like to thank our partners at Oracle for helping make this series of conversations possible. And um, Vinny, thanks again for all your amazing work. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Bye.